Testing. Okay, I guess we can get started. Welcome to CS4510, Lecture 6A. Um, today we're going to be talking about an entirely new kind of computer, uh, a new kind of automata. Um, so we talked last time, so far to this course, we've talked about regular languages, we talked about DFAs and NFAs, we've talked about context-free grammars, and we actually mentioned specifically that uh, certain, there are some interesting context-free languages which have uh, grammars to produce them. They're uh, like the Dick language uh, produces strings. It, the grammar is this, SS, or open S close, or epsilon, and it produces things like open close, open close, or like open, 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 close, close, close. Um, do you guys remember in a data structures class maybe that you had to implement some kind of program to recognize calculator sentences, like valid calculator arithmetic expressions? Like you had pluses and subtractions and divisions and things and you had to use, you had to write a program to solve the equation. Do you remember what data structure you used in the data structures class? A stack. A stack, right? The stack. The reason I mention that is because basically to check if a string is valid, as you read it left to right, you push it onto the stack when you see an open, do your math, you see a close, you pop something off a stack, right? Maybe even two stacks. One for the parentheses, one for the expressions, that kind of thing. Um, but it turns out that, the, so the stack is actually surprisingly powerful. So we're just going to we're going to talk about the stack a lot today. We're going to just going to, so uh, the topic of today's lecture is a pushdown automata. Also known as PDA. And it's quite literally, we're just going to take an NFA and augment it to have a stack. That's it. That's all an NFA is. It's just take an NFA, give it a stack. That's all it is. The definition does not seem obvious on like how you would do that, because you have a formal definition. You have an intuitive definition of DFA going state to state. Um, uh, you have a formal definition of, a D, of an NFA or DFA. Recall that they're equivalent uh, going from state to state. But like, how would you formally define? It's not obvious how you would formally define giving an NFA a stack. So here's the way we're going to do it, is we're going to change the transition function so that on each successive step, you can not only read the input, but you can read or write to the stack. You can pop or push from the stack. So a, uh, a PDA looks like this. It has the following form. It has a Q, uh, is the set of states. Most of these parts are going to be the same. We're going to have sigma. We have a new thing called gamma, which is actually just a different alphabet. We're going to have Q0. Delta, of course, where all the fun stuff happens, and the final states. So that's, what, that's the formal definition of a PDA. It'll, of course, it'll make sense if we go through some examples, but let's just start with the formal definition. Uh, this is what a PDA uh, looks like. Uh, Q is going to be, of course, uh, the finite set of states. Uh, sigma is going to be what's called the input alphabet. This is to distinguish it from gamma, which is known as the stack alphabet. So there's two alphabets now. There's a sigma alphabet, which is like AB or 0, 1. Gamma is what's called the stack alphabet. So what this means is the input alphabet is the set of symbols that appear in the input that you read. The stack alphabet is the set of symbols you can read or write to from the stack. And usually it's kind of like, who cares about having two stacks? So by convention, we usually allow uh, gamma to just be sigma, but then we add a special symbol called a canary. Just, for con just to make things easier, it'll make sense why we add the special symbol. But in general, like, I guess, not, actually not in general, the opposite of in general. Usually when you write a PDA, you just apply this convention to make things simpler, right? Uh, Q0 is just some start state. You have to start somewhere. And of course, the most important part, all of this doesn't really matter. It's really about delta. So delta is a transition function. And if you recall for an NFA, 
Well, for a DFA, our transition function was like what? It was uh, you take you go from a single state uh, to a, read a symbol off the input, and you go to a new state, right? Uh, for an NFA, for an NFA, you um, start at a single state. And then you can choose to read a symbol off the input. So you can go sigma union epsilon. So you can take epsilon transitions. And then instead of going to a single state, you go to a power set, uh, a set of possible states. Right? That was the definition for an NFA. Now, the PDA, we want it to be non-deterministic. So we want something that looks more like the NFA expression. We want not only to read a symbol off the input, but to read a symbol off the stack and write a symbol onto the stack. So the, the, the formal definition is going to be exactly as I said. We're going to take a single state. Now we want to be able to read a symbol off the input or not. We can choose not to read the symbol. And then we want to read a symbol uh, off the top of the stack. or not. So we can also skip reading the top of the stack. And we're going to go to um, a power set, because we want to go to multiple states. But then we don't want to just go to a single state. But we want to go to um, also write a symbol in the stack. So this is going to be from some state, from the input, from the top of the stack. We go to a new state, and this is what we read. We want to write something, optionally write something. So we're going to say it's going to look like this. I kind of like and don't like this definition because it's really complicated looking. It's far more complicated than the actual devices are, are going to appear. And then, um, but that I think is kind of interesting. Like this is, I don't know, there's like maybe 25 symbols here to explain something relatively simple. Um, the set of final states is just going to be a subset of Q. So the final states are just you know, final states, like, a, like in a DFA or an FA. So the convention we employ is like, uh, like if we have like a, a, a comma B, C, if this is a transition, What this means is read A off input. Uh, read, we're going to say pop B off stack. So again, it's called a push down automata, but I guess like the orientation doesn't matter. You can think you push down, and you pop off, right? Arbitrary. Um, but if B is not at the top of the stack, then you can't take that transition. And then you're going to push, push. Uh, C onto stack. So it's there is a con there is like a kind of a hidden conditional uh, going on here, where you can only take the transition. For example, if A was the next input, next symbol in the input, and if B was the next was the top of the stack, and only if those satisfy would you be able to push C. So given uh, that, let me just uh, uh, you know when you have a definition like this, it's really like a really obtuse and graphical programming language. So let me see if I can give you some code, quote unquote, and see if you can interpret what these transitions would mean. So suppose you had, so again, this is read, pop, push, right? So what do you think uh, this transition does? And again, this is a valid transition. You read nothing off the input, you pop nothing off the stack, and then you push nothing. If you see this transition, what do you think the program is doing, going from one state to another? Loop. Well, suppose it's going to two different states, right? So there, implicitly, there's something like this. So basically, if you read nothing from the top of the stack and then you push nothing to the stack, the stack remains unchanged. So you ignore the stack. And then if you take an epsilon transition here, you read nothing off the input. 
So this effectively tr transition states without changing the input and without changing the stack. So this effectively makes it like a normal epsilon transition in an NFA. This is the behavior of this. You can just change states without changing anything else. That's what that means. OK, now what if we had uh, something like this? We had like A, we read A off the input, we pop nothing, and then we push A. We read B off the input, we pop nothing, and we push B. As a programming kind of thing, what do you think this transition is doing? Just to give you a picture of a, of a, of a PDA, right? So it, there's some computer looking thing, right? It has access not only to a stack where it can push down on, but also access to this input. where it can advance through the input as it reads it. So like A, B, C, D, right? So as it, like, an, like a same, same thing with the DFA and NFA. You, once you read a character off the input, you can't go back and read it unless you somehow stored it in your memory in some way. So as you, as you advance through the input, you can't go back. But now, unlike a DFA or an NFA, this now has a data structure where it can push things to, right? So just intuitively, what would you guys think that this trans, what, what, what would you think this does if you had to associate it to like a programming just structure. Just keeps writing A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Right. Like writing what you just read. Sorry, one more time? It's like you're writing what you just read. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So, so here, just to be clear, read A off the input, pop nothing, push A. But this only, transition only runs if A was the top of the stack, A was the next symbol in the input. But we have one for A and B. So what this effectively does is just going to read the next character off the input and push it to the stack. So you read the symbol off the input here and then push it to the stack. That's what that means. If this was in a self loop, what this would do is go through the whole input, push the whole thing to the stack, then it would run out of input and do something bad. Right? But this basically dumps the input to the stack. Right? Uh, similarly, what about this one? Let's say we read nothing off the input. Uh, pop A, push nothing, or read nothing off the input, pop B, and push nothing. Just reading the stack? Right. Exactly. So, exactly. So, what happens is we're reading A, off, A or B off the top of the input, but explicitly here, we're not just reading it, we're actually popping. Then, uh, so, what this is going to do is if you even, even suppose this was like in a self loop, this is just going to dump the stack. You pop, 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 pop. You're not doing anything. You're not going anywhere. You stay in the same state. If you're popping, this dumps the stack, essentially. Now, just it's not really important, but it's just the, the way we've defined it. Uh, if you wanted to just read it, let's say you wanted to peek at the top of the stack. right? You didn't want to destroy the top of the stack. What you would have to do then is this, something like this. So you read A, pop B, push B. So you, whatever you read, you push it right back. So that's like if you pop something and you push it back, it's the same, right? But this is how you could conditionally just peek, right? I think that's a well-defined thing, right? I think so? Peek at the top of the stack conditionally, right? So you only want to maybe perform a transition if um, you saw an A and the top of the stack was a B. But you didn't want to touch the B. You wanted to leave the B there. This is the kind of transition you would perform. So this is some uh, examples of uh, transitions in a PDA. Now, of course, this doesn't matter or make sense until we do an example. So um, let's just do like a classic example, right? So let's do funny language. Let's do A to the N, uh, B to the N. Uh, N is a natural number. So before we construct a PDA for this, what would be a like program that uses a stack that could decide this language? Like you take on input a string A to the N, B to the N, and you want to check it looks like A to the N, B to the N. 
And if, let's suppose I, you could check, you could write a Python program to do this, obviously. Suppose you, I forced you to use a stack data structure. How would you do it? While you're reading the A, you keep pushing it onto the stack. Once you see a B, you keep popping off the A. If the stack is empty at the end, then it's that. Um, if you see another A and you're popping the A's, then it's not. And if the stack is not empty, then it's not. Perfect. Basically, you use uh, the stack in a weaker way, like a counter. A counter is a variable, but you can only say plus, plus, or minus, minus. You can't like say counter equals something, right? You can just say plus, plus, or minus, minus. Um, that's what a counter is. So basically, you could implement this with a counter loop over the string. A plus plus, every time you read an A plus plus, every time you see a B minus minus, except only at the end if it's empty. If, it's ne if it ever goes negative, uh, bad things happen. If, you're, if at the end it's not zero, that means there was more A's than B's, right? So uh, again, uh, that's not good. The problem with this immediately is we need a way to test if the stack is empty. So like, we need a way to check that, this, that we've reached the end of the stack. And as defined, we have no way to test is empty, like if the counter is zero. But that's OK, because in a programming language, you can just define things, like how C++ is technically written in C, right? You, what you can do is just build that feature into the PDA. And that's exactly what uh, this stack canary is for. If we push the symbol first, whenever we see it again, we know that we're at the end of the stack. That's the only way we can tell. And that's why we make sure that this, this uh, dollar sign symbol does not appear in the input alphabet. It'll never appear in the thing we're trying to check, like this part. It only can only appear here. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have a, our start state. Now, before we even do anything to the input, like as a normal program, we want to push the canary. We don't want to disturb the input. So we're going to read nothing off the input, pop nothing off the stack, and then push the canary. Right? So in this view, the stack is now the input has not advanced. Our little arrow here is still at the start, at the, at the first letter, preparing us to read the first letter of the input. But now the stack contains, you know, dollar sign, just a dollar sign. And you, of course, like a, unlike a, uh, maybe some other languages, programming languages, you cannot peek deep into the stack, right? You cannot like say what's the tenth element in the stack. You can only say what's the top. That's the limitation of this device here. So now that we've seen we pushed a dollar sign. We want to push all the A's, right? And then we want to pop them, matching the B's. So what is that going to be like? If we see an A off the input, push an A, pop an A, no, pop nothing, push A, right? And you could think of each state like a line of code. So like you want a condition of you going to the next line of code, right? So we should leave this state when we're done seeing A's and we see a B. So we're going to, I'll do it this way. We see a B, uh, what should we do? We should pop the A, push nothing. Right? Uh, we go to some new state here. Let's just call these something, Q1, Q2. Uh, now what we want to do is every time we pop a B off the stack, we want to match it to an A. No, every time we pop, see a B in the input, we want to match it to an A that we have previously pushed. So we've met, now matched the first B we've seen in the string to the last A popped. So now we need to match the rest of the Bs to the As that were previously pushed. So we're going to read a B off the input pop an A off the stack, and push nothing. Now, uh, we only want to accept if the stack was empty exactly when 
uh, it's supposed to be. So what that means is we want to, if we see, if we have no input left and we see a canary, if we have no input left and we see the canary, so we pop the canary, push nothing, uh, and we accept. So this technically is the PDA uh, for it. But there's, to understand the execution, there's actually a lot implicitly uh, defined here. So um, first off, there's one error with this. You guys, maybe, let's see if you can see what it is. It's really subtle, actually. The transitions are all correct. I'll give you a hint on that one. There is an edge case this program does not uh, satisfy. It's not like A, B, 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 A. Like a A after the section of B? So actually, I think I should talk about that first. Suppose we saw the power of the PDA being non-deterministic means if we see something unexpected, we implicitly reject. If we're at this state, instead of seeing an A, let's suppose we see a B, and there was no A at the top of the stack, any transitions that's not defined, implicitly reject. Yeah? So if, the, if it's N is 0, A to the 0, B to the 0, then it won't ever read an A or a B. It's still in the language, but it won't like pass through their transitions, so we'll never reach the end. Exactly. So basically the empty string is in the language, but in order to reach, the only path to the accept state is through this transition, and this transition requires reading a B of the input. So this, the fix for this is this. So two things. One, you should, sh uh, one, the power of non-determinism means that all the other implicit things are rejected. We only have to focus on the part of the program we care about. So suppose, what are, what are the opposites of this input? What are the things that aren't this? Let's say we read the, let's say, first off, it, the A's and B's are separate, but there's more A's than B's, okay? Suppose there's more A's than B's, push all the A's, pop only the number of B's. Let's say there's 10 A's and seven B's. We're only gonna pop off seven of the A's. There's gonna be three A's left. What do you do? You're never gonna take this transition until you get rid of those three A's. So here, you have to implicitly reject. You can only, your, the computation only finishes when you're done with the input, right? Let's suppose now there was like, let's say three A's and 20 B's, okay? That means there's way more A's than B's. Push the three A's, pop three B's, but now you need to like keep popping, but the stack is empty. So you could take this implicit epsilon rejection, this, this implicit, uh, uh, not this, not, uh, this explicit transition, then you, but then you still have like 17 Bs left in the input. You are forced to read them. You only accept, you, you only stop the computation when you're done with the input. So from here, you would implicitly reject for that. Yes? But don't you take that transition only when you see an epsilon? If you're seeing Bs. Epsilon, you can take whenever. That's the subtlety here I'm trying to oh, okay. get. Like you can take this before you're ready, but all those, but you should design your program in such a way that, that if that happens, you get to reject. Oh, I see. Implicitly, yeah. So, uh, one final remark. This program is actually not that much like a DFA. There's not a lot of crossing going around. It's pretty much a straight line. So it really corresponds closer to an algorithm than it does something closer to a DFA or NFA, right? Um, most programs are kind of like straight line anyway, right? Line of code, line of code, line of code. There's not a lot of jumping back uh, necessarily. Um, so yeah, so this does now accept the empty string by adding, making this a final state. Uh, yeah, in general, most PDAs, for them to be useful, you want to accept and reject, you want the first thing you do to push the canary and the last thing you do to pop the canary, right? So this is the PDA for A to the N, B to the N. Right. Um, let's do another one. Any questions on this example before we uh, go? I think it's... I think we've nailed it. So here's a here's a, a slightly harder one. W W R so even length palindromes. Uh, w is in a sigma star. So even length palindromes, classic example. We proved this language was not regular web pumping. We gave several context free grammars for it. Um, what is the main idea, though? We want to create a PDA for this. What should be the main idea? Probably that you pop on the first word and then, uh, sorry, uh, push on the first word, pop off the reverse of the word. If it's empty, you're good. Exactly. So you push the first half, 
then you pop the second half matching them, right? Whatever you push into the stack, when you pop it off, it has to come off the reverse way. That's the key idea. Um, there's a problem with that, though. Uh, how do you know where the middle of the string is? So the answer is you non-deterministically guess the middle. All the other compu every computation that guesses the middle incorrectly is going to implicitly reject. And there, as we non-deterministically say that a machine accepts a word if there exists a computation that accepts. So one of the guesses is going to be correct in the middle, and that's the one that will accept. That's the design here. But it's going to be very similar to this. Instead of a counter, using the stack as a counter, we use the stack like a full stack. Like We're going to push more than just one symbol to it. So uh, we're going to begin like this. Um, so what am I going to do? We're going to read nothing off the input, uh, pop nothing, and push the canary. Uh, then we want to push the first half of the string in there. So what does that mean? We're going to read an A off the input, push, pop nothing, push the A, read nothing off the in, read a B off the input, pop nothing off the stack, push B. So that's just going to start dumping part of the stack to the, excuse me, that's going to start dumping part of the input to the stack, right? Uh, then we're going to guess the middle. Also, there's no real good reason why I'm drawing these like Zs, except to be compact. Like, you don't have to do that. That's like just something I'm, I made up, right? So uh, we're going to just guess the middle, non-deterministically guess the middle, OK? Um, then we're going to uh, pop what's currently on the stack and match it to what we see. So we're going to read an A. If we read an A off the input, the top of the stack better be an A, right? And we push nothing. If we read a B off the input, the top of the stack better be a B. And then we want to accept only when the stack is empty. So pop the canary, push nothing. Except. So first remark is uh, this: the empty string is an even length palindrome. The empty string has length zero, uh, so it is zero is even. It's even length palindrome. Uh, second, th so this PDA should accept the empty string, and we don't need to make the start state accepting for it to accept the empty string here. Why? Here's the computation path to accept the string of length zero. Push the canary. Epsilon transition, pop the canary, accept. So a computation on the empty string exists, but takes three steps. Kind of surprising. Um, let's do a computation to demonstrate uh, what I mean by like the, like the guessing. So suppose our input was like, uh, I'll do something small, A, B, B, A. And our stack was like this. So I'll draw it like this, I think. So suppose this is our a snapshot of the computation at the beginning, right? I'm going to go through the steps to decide this uh, string. So we're going to go to, um, first thing we're going to do is push the canary. So after we've pushed the canary, this is what the input looks like, and this is what the stack looks like. And I'll draw this. I'll draw this underline. I don't know if that's clear enough. I'll draw the underline to denote where the head, uh, where what we're looking at on the input uh, currently. Now here we see an, we can read an A. So we're going to take this A transition here, and then we're going to push an A onto the stack. What that means is because we read A off the input, we have to advance our what we're looking at in the input. So that's going to be A B B A. And we're going to look at this part. But then the stack is now going to contain a uh, count. right? So the stack now contains a dollar sign. If you're reading the stack, you have no idea what else is at the, anywhere else except the top of the stack. right? From here, we're going to push the b now. So a, b, b, a. We're looking at the b. b. A dollar sign. So we previously pushed the canary, then we pushed the A, and now we push the B. Top of the stack is the B. 
So what we're going to do is as we pop this out, it's not going to read AB, it's going to read BA. Because the first thing we're going to read is the B, next thing we're going to read is the A, and so on. So we're going to read, what we're going to do now is non-deterministically guess. This is, the, this is the point we take this epsilon transition. We're going to match this B here to this B in the input here, and we're going to take this transition. This transition says B in the input, B top of the stack, pop it, right? So what that looks like is going to look like that. So we've popped B off the top of the stack, and now we've advanced ourselves to the input. And look at that. A is now the symbol we can read currently, and the top of the stack contains an A. So we're going to pop both of those, and I, we're out of input now. Right. I guess I have to denote it this way. And this top of the stack contains a canary. So we're out of input. Top of the stack contains a canary. The only transitions we can take are epsilon transitions for the input. We can't read anything else off the input. There is luckily enough one transition left for us to take, which is this one. So we pop the dollar sign off the top of the stack. And here, we're done reading the input. We can accept. The stack does not need to be empty for us to accept. But it would be nice. It's convenient. You know, uh, usually the algorithms that you would want to implement, like the stack should be, like you've kept track of everything in the stack. The stack has been used fully if it's empty by the time you're done. So this would accept, right? Consider all the places you could guess too early or guess too late. Guess the middle too early or guess the middle too late. Uh, if you guess the middle, like consider the input, consider the computation uh, of this PDA on a string that looks like W, W, R, a, right? So like it's an odd string, odd length string, and there's a, it's almost a palindrome. There's just one extra thing there. Like if you guess the W, let's say you guess the middle correct, kind of correctly here, but you should reject this string. You push this to the stack. You pop this from the stack. You end up here, okay? Because that computation will take you there. However, you have one more A on the input. So you are forced to implicitly reject from this state. That's, that's, uh, the fact. If you were to guess the position incorrectly, uh, the guess the midpoint incorrectly, then uh, you would not accept. Anywhere you can guess the midpoint incorrectly, the part you're going, you can think of there's two numbers here. There's a number of how much you push to the stack and how much you pop from the stack. If you guess the midpoint incorrectly at all, those two are not going to line up. You're going to either pop more than you want than you pushed, or you're going to push more than you will pop. So those two not lining up means that um, you will never reach the accept state because this, this only works if the last symbol you saw is the canary. That's really the important, also the importance of this setup with the, with the, with the canary here. Okay, so those are two, two uh, good examples of PDAs. I have a few more. Let's do the dick language. So this is like balanced. Balanced mathing parentheses. So basically, um, to try to come up with this one, I'll give you guys two minutes, and then we'll, maybe a minute, and then we'll do it. This one's actually surprisingly easier than the other we've done so far. Think first how you would implement this. So again, uh, think, think first how you would implement this as an algorithm. Like, if you had to write a program that uses a stack to determine if a parenthetical string was correct or not. Um, and then turn that into a PDA, basically.
is the empty string considered valid? Sure. So I'm not exactly sure what these are called, um, but there's, an, there's known to be a lot of uh, like deep mathematical connections between the Dick language and other parts of mathematics, combinatorics, group theory, and things like this. Uh, and they're, I forget what these are called, but these are like graphs that look like, uh, let's say these are all the points, right? So they look like pyramids. And it, consider all the paths from one corner to the next corner that could go through there. You're only allowed to go uh, up or down one. So you could go like this. Um, that's one path. You could go like this. You could go like this. But you have to start and stop at the, the, the leftmost corner and the rightmost corner. I forgot what these are called, but it turns out these actually correspond exactly to the strings of a, of a certain length uh, in the Dick language. So you think of every up direction like an open parenthesis and every down direction like a closed parenthesis. So this would be open, 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 close, close, close. This would be open, close, open, close, open, close. This would be open, open, close, close, open, close. Something like that, right? So, uh, and not only do these kind of diagrams, which I don't know what they're called, correspond to the strings of that length of the Dick language, but they also correspond to the computation of the Dick language on uh, a PDA uh, of where the height of the graph is actually the stack depth used, right? So what you're going to do is exactly, uh, as we said at the beginning, where you're going to, every time you see an open, you're going to increment a counter. Every time you see, you see, you see a close, you're going to decrement the counter. That's exactly what we want to do. So we're going to start somewhere. We need to check how to, um, if the stack is empty. So we're going to read nothing off the input, uh, pop nothing, push the canary. Then we're going to, uh, well, every time we see an open, we increment the counter. Every time we see a close, we should decrement the counter. So it's actually much easier than it looks. If we see an open, push an A. Now, I'm choosing uh, to have the stack alph alphabet be A just for simplicity. I could use parentheses here, but it's doesn't really matter. And every time we see a close, pop the A. That's it. And we want to accept only if the canary uh, is the last thing we see. And this board is loud. That's the, that's the PDA for the Dick language. Does it accept the empty string? Yes. Pop the canary. Uh, excuse me. Push the canary, pop the canary. And notice here that these graphs correspond exactly to the stack, stack depth used, right? Open, close, open, close, open, close. Generalize that to as many opens and closes as you want. That's only going to use the stack depth at most one. 
Open, pop, push, pop, push, pop, push, pop. This also notice is it has to be able to uh, go to arbitrary depth though because you need to be able to decide push, 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 uh, like open, 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 close, close, close because you're, gonna, you're going your stack is going to look like push, 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 pop, 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 right? And you can have a string of arbitrarily length that's just open. So you need to be able to have an arbitrary large memory structure for that. That's another reason this language isn't regular. Yeah. So on the, like the pyramid graph, a straight horizontal line correspond to the empty string. The empty, so the, so the size of the graph corresponds to the length of the string. Oh. So the empty string would be like a, gra like a triangle of this. So these four by four by four triangles correspond to length six strings. So like the empty string would be like, I guess, a no, no triangle. Right? So always like a little edge case with the empty string on, on most things like this. When the interesting structure is for the strings of arbitrarily, arbitrary length, right? I think this is another proof somewhere here, like the Catalan numbers are the number of strings of length of, in the Dick language of length n or 2n, and also the number of paths that, you, that follow this rule. So that's, that's another proof, I think, that the Dick language is the Catalan numbers, like the, num the number of that length, something like this. OK? So this, this first half, we're just going to talk about a million examples. And then in the second half, we'll talk about the relationship between PDAs and the rest of the, of the things we've seen. So just to, some more examples to go through. This one is slightly harder, but it's kind of like the ones we've seen so far. We reuse this stack as a counter. So w is in uh, sigma star, but the number of a's in w equal to the number of b's in w. So we have enforced a number rule on the words in this language, but not an ordered structure. So we're only concerned with counting in the string and not with order in the string. So subsets of this language include A to the N, B to the N. It also includes things like the Dick language, because there, for every open in the Dick language, there's a close. Um, all we care about, it's kind of like A to the N, B to the N, except now the things can be out of order. So maybe let's give you guys a minute and try and think of a of a, a PDA for this one. It's going to be kind of like a mix between the one for A to the N, B to the N, and kind of like the one for the Dick language, because those are kind of similar, if you think about it. But we want to use the stack in a, in, in, as, in a way like a counter. Somehow, if we see an A, we want to match that to a B somewhere else. But the problem is, like, what if you see a B first? Right? A to the N, B to the N is fine, because all the A's come, are supposed to come before the B's. But this should also, this PDA should also accept B to the N, A to the N, right, for example. So think about uh, how you could use uh, the stack uh, to, to rectify that issue. So something I just thought of actually with this language is it has some interesting properties as well. Like if you take the concatenation, this language is closed under concatenation. If you think about it. If you take two strings in this language and you concatenate them together, then it's true that if the two previous strings had the number of A's equals the number of B's, then the concatenation of those two strings will 
have the number of A's equals the number of B's as well. Mostly because the sum is like conserved. It's not that important, but it's going to be influential when we design our, our, our PDA. The, the idea behind the PDA basically is like, OK, A to the N, B to the N works. You push the A's and pop the B's. What if you see a B first? What you do is you treat the stack in the negative direction. So whatever the top symbol is indicates the parity in the direction of this. Like, imagine a stack, that, a counter that could go negative, right? So like, you only care if the, at the end of the computation, this counter is 0. And in the examples we've done for the Dick language and for a to the n, b to the n, the counter goes positive, it fluctuates, and then comes back. Uh, here, we want the counter to possibly be negative, but it's OK as long as we kind of come back. So we just use the symbols a and b themselves to indicate the parity of the stack. right? So like, positive in one direction would be a, and negative in the other direction would be b. So like, if you peek at the top of the stack, you see a b. You should interpret that as, I've seen more b's at this moment than what I've seen previously. Uh, so let me, let me just uh, give the PDA. This one is a little bit messy. So read nothing, push nothing, uh, excuse me, pop nothing, push the canary. Now we want to seed this kind of idea. So we are just going to push the first thing we see. So if we see an A, uh, pop, push, pop nothing, push the A. We see the B, pop nothing, uh, push the B. So we're just going to push the first symbol we see. Then we need to make sure, is the empty string accepted in this? We'll make sure that that gets handled. I guess we could just do it now. Right. Now what we want to do is, like, what happens if we, uh, so we've seen, let's say the top of the stack is an A and we see a B. If we treat the stack like a counter, we see an A and we, the top of the stack is an A. It means there's a surplus of A's. Maybe there's, we've seen seven A's at some, some point. But now we see a B. So we're going to match the, top, the A at the top of the stack to the B we've just seen, so they cancel out. And maybe now that means we're at, we only have a surplus of six uh, A's or something, right? So what that means is like if we see an A and the top of the stack is a B, or we see a B and the top of the stack is an A, we're just going to pop it. So we're going to use the A's and B's that are adjacent to cancel each other out. If you were thinking of making like a grammar for this, like you would go find maybe substrings inside, and then if there's an A and a B that are touching, you delete those two. And then you, if you could recursively apply that, then certainly that the string would only ever collapse if there was one A per B and one B per A. So then this would be the empty string during that process. So we're going to basically annihilate A's and B's that are next to each other, uh, kind of. Now, the problem is, is what happens if we see two A's in a row? Right? So like, let's say the top of the stack is an A. Maybe we've seen three A's at this point, And we see another A. We need to push it to the stack. But in a way that we don't, we can only check the stack by popping it. So we need to push two A's, actually. Right? So what's going to happen is I'm going to have a state here, something like this. Uh, let's say I read an A off the input, but the top of the stack was an A. Unfortunately, I have to, I'm going to push that A back and then do this to say read, in, read nothing off the input, pop nothing, and push an A. So if you think about this, if we see an A on the input and there's an A on the top of the stack, then we're just going to keep that A back and then push a different A. So now the stack had, has one more additional A. Similarly, um, If we see a B on the top of the stack, but we see a B in the input, we have to push it back. Then we need to push another, uh, another B. Push nothing, pop nothing, push the B. Right. Um, then we need to accept only if the canary is the uh, last thing we see. Looks mostly right. Uh, you can think of the PDA during the computation as it fluctuating, fluctuating, full of A's and B's, whatever we have a surplus of, and performing this annihilation. But there's a small issue with this. A small bug. A very small bug. Let's see if you can catch it.
The reason I mention this is because I actually did not catch this bug first time <laughs> I saw it. So. Okay, I think I'll tell you guys. Basically, what happens is like what happens to this this kind of PDA on the computation like A B A B, right? So there do exist words that correspond to like the computation of the stack being empty at certain points. Like somehow like these these uh, uh, kind of graphs of the of the of the stack depth. This stack is never empty except at the start and the end. This stack is empty at several points during the computation, and this stack is empty once during the computation, right? So there do exist words where the stack should be empty, like the counter effectively zero, but we're not done reading the input here. So we see the A, push the A, see the B, pop the A. But now the top of the stack is going to be the dollar sign. So there is no dollar sign transition that puts us in this state that's been defined, right? So what we need to do is if we see the dollar sign, we just basically need to perform a reset. So what we're going to do is if we, if we have something in the input, we see a dollar sign, we just need to push the input to the stack and basically like reset ourselves. And that effectively means doing this. We see an A, pop the dollar sign, and push the dollar sign right back. So we don't touch the dollar sign. Similar here, if we see a B, uh, we see the dollar sign, push the dollar sign right back. This PDA would have been correct, without those uh, additions, would have been correct if the words were never empty at any intermediate point. If they were like the Dick language or like A to the N, B to the N, then it would have been fine, but they're not. So, but the, these, like A, B, A, B has to be accepted, right? So we have to, we have to do that. Okay, so this is a PDA for a fairly complicated language. I have uh, one more PDA for us, and then we can go on our little break. So consider the language um, a to the i, b to the j, uh, c to the k, uh, such that uh, i equals j or uh, j equals k. I'll give you guys a minute to think about this one. And then we'll uh, just give you the answer. So basically, uh, the, the idea is like you push the A's, and then you have B's and C's. You need to decide to m either match the A's to the B's or match the A's to the C's. And the way you make that decision is, of course, non-deterministically. So you just kind of guess if you're going to be matching the A's, A's to the B's or the A's to the C's. So you're going to go like, um, first thing you do, of course, is push the canary. Uh, pop nothing, push the canary. 
then you're just going to epsilon transition to two new like sub P, uh, PDAs uh, to do it. Um, before you, you before you decide whether to go to the B's or the C's, though, you need to push all the A's. So we're going to push all the A's. Push the A. Read the A for the input. Pop nothing. Push the A. Yes. Okay. Now, once you're at this state, let's say this bottom branch is going to be uh, the one where we match it to the B's. So we want to pop every B we see. Uh, so if we see a B on the input. Match it to an A, so pop the A, push nothing. And that, we want to accept only if uh, the stack is empty. Stack is empty, pop the canary, push nothing. However, the input should still have some more Cs left on it, so we're just going to ignore the Cs. How? Read C off the input and just ignore it. Right. So this branch of the computation will push the A's, pop the B's matching the A's, and then throw away the C's. So, so that'll take care of the case that I equals J. Now we need to do the case where we skip the C's, uh, excuse me, we skip the B's and then match the A's to the C's. But you're matching the B's to the C's in the language. Did I say this wrong? Because it's J equals J, equals J. J equals K, let me make sure. Matching the A's to the C's. I think I there should be a typo here. Yeah. Let's do I. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Not that it matters because you could actually implement both. Just fine. Here, let's suppose it was J equals K. Uh, the branch would then just skip the A's and then match B's to the C's. So that'd be like B to the N, C to the N, right? Similarly. Um, but let's. Just for interest, let's do matching the A's to the C's, so the B's are skipped. Um, so we previously pushed the A's. Now we want to skip the B's here. So all we're going to do, quite literally, is just skip the B's. Read to B, skip it. Um, when we're done skipping the B's, we're going to epsilon transition to begin uh, matching the C's to the A's. So what we're going to do is we're going to, every time we see a C on the input, we're going to pop an A off the stack and push nothing. Right. Double check me here. And then we want to accept only when um, it's, the stack is empty. So read the canary and push nothing. Pop the canary, excuse me, uh, and accept. Okay. Does this PDA also accept the empty string? It should. I equals J equals zero and K equals zero. So I, J, K equals zero is the empty string. Push the canary, epsilon, epsilon, pop the canary. It does accept the empty string. So this PDA does accept the empty string. This is an example of a PDA which is like, um, I don't think you could do this one with, with a deterministic version of, of a PDA. Like it's explicitly, like we won't, we talk, that uh, DFAs and NFAs ended up being the same. Turns out that DPDAs and PDAs are not the same. And we won't talk about DPDAs because they're kind of complicated. But this non-deterministic power here actually provably makes a difference between uh, PDAs and DPDAs. So this is a kind of thing you couldn't do with a uh, deterministic version of a PDA, but you could, you can only do, you could do non-deterministically just by guessing which, which condition you want to satisfy, I equals J or I equals K. All right. Um, when we come back, we'll talk about the relationship between uh, the languages decided by PDAs and um, the other things we've talked about in this class so far. <laughs>